Hi, it's Jessie. I'm here because uh, I was editing a video and realized I never did an intro for it and I need to get that out soon. So uh, this video is inspired by two things. I'm gonna leave you a little bit in suspense about what this is. Obviously the title told you at least something, but um, so the first one is when I was in, living in Maine, the school I worked at had this book in the library. I'll put a picture here because I think I deleted the picture off of my phone. And every time I went to the school library, I was so tempted to pick it up by name alone because I was so curious. But I think if I remember right, reading the, script, the description of it, it didn't sound like my thing. And the more recent thing that like really, really sparked like I'm gonna do this video was this tweet. I hope it's still available for me to screenshot. If not, I will insert at least the book the tweet was about. Uh, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do this video. And the video, of course, is reading books with titles the same as Wheel of Time book titles, or at least very similar, as close as I could get. Other booktubers I've seen have done similar things where they read books with the same titles as their favorite books, or reading two books with the same title and comparing them. So this is kind of like that, except I know these are going to be absolutely nothing like Wheel of Time and I'm reading them based solely on the name. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna let you guys watch and see how that went. So enjoy. Okay, we're gonna get started on the first book I have here. So it's The Eyes of the World by Harold Bell Wright. So it's plural eyes, but it was either this or a book called Eye of the World without the the, and I chose to go for this one. Uh, so this is originally published in 1914, so we've got a classic here. Uh, it sounds like a really... oh god. It sounds like it's gonna be really boring. It's a story about an artist being a sellout? I think. Oh, I the water's boiling. Give me some. Oh, I hate when they do that. Anyway, okay. Uh, so I have about 20, 30 minutes to go before my I have to teach. So I'm gonna get started on this one. I have it from, uh, from d -d 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 script. So we're gonna get started. In that city of culture, which is given to the history of our nation, to education, to religion, to the sciences, and to the many arts. for November. I think you'll probably be seeing this mid-December. I don't know. And so there's one tea I haven't yet tried from it, so I figured I can try it for you now. And this is natural rubos tea from Rubos Rocks. Take cute little deepers on it. And little hearts. It's very cute. Um, it's from Pure 100% natural USDA organic rooibos tea. It says this rooibos Roy Boss. If I've ever had some rooibos tea wrong my entire life. Anyway, it's sustainably and ethically grown in South Africa. It's packed with immune boosting antioxidants and is very hydrating and is great for the whole family. Uh, if you're interested in my review, there will be a link. Um, link. This corner. Um, so you can check that out. Or I will have a link in the description to. Uh, sorry, you're gonna have to watch me eat dinner while I do this clip because I just finished The Eyes of the World by some guy. I don't know who it is. Um, and it was terrible. I almost eat up this so many times. I'm glad, like, in the middle of this book, I just took a very long break to read a bunch of really unrelated stuff for the Thousand Door Readathon. Check uh, my vlog for that if you haven't seen it already. Anyway, um, because, oh god, it's terrible. It's just... 
it was really really boring the audiobook i'm not I, I don't judge the content of the book so when i like rate books and stuff i don't judge them on the audiobooks although like obviously that will have an impact on my overall enjoyment of the story but this was like clearly like this book is in the public domain now and some guy took it upon himself to create an audiobook for it which is like great that's really sweet of him but at the start and the end of literally every chapter it was like this is Bennett blah 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 from blah 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 like you know how if you ever listen to an audiobook the beginning of the book will tell you like this is so and so read by so and so at the end it'll be like this has been a production by so and so of so and so you know um yeah it did that for every chapter every chapter so anyway that was a nightmare but the book itself oh boy so like the one thing that i caught on from the synopsis that was in the book was about art selling out like is it okay to be untrue to your vision in order to make more money and ultimately the conclusion the book comes to is that no it's not okay to do that that you have to be stay true to your vision stay true to your book or your the one guy's an author and the other guy's an artist stay true to your vision no matter what and sacrifice the fame and the fortune you will get which is fine like whatever it's not a thing i agree with it's a very classist idea like the whole concept of starving artists is just bad but that was fine the other themes were less fine and the way that they used women to symbolize these themes was even less fine um also there was just a ra really really racist unnecessary chinese character i don't know why he was there the, the guy had a chinese servant that was only ever referred to as the chinaman it was not necessary um and let's see what are what are some other things um there's a character that has a horrible scar on her face i think it's a burn if i'm remembering right she for the rest record uh symbolizes something about men being dangerous whatever um which is the thing this thing this book just takes for granted like men are dangerous they're scary that's just in their nature they can't help it and if they rise above that that means they're godly men Ugh. anyway so anyway she has a name i think it was said in the book like once or twice but more often than not she's referred to as the disfigured woman so that's or the woman with the disfigured face so that's great that's great um just you know reducing your women to their single characteristic so there's also a rich woman that symbolizes the frivolity of wealth or something like that and the main female character the love interest that is like symbolic of freedom and innocence so you know the men might have symbolized things too but i definitely didn't pick up on it as clearly because they weren't just symbols like these women had no character traits beyond being simple and there was also this tendency of the author to describe every woman juxtaposing some characteristic that was young with some characteristic that was like old and what I mean by this is every single woman that was introduced was described as she was so blah 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 as a child or such and such as a girl but also with the something or other as of a woman like it's disgusting so the moral of this uh, is that if you read a book over 100 years old that isn't considered a classic, maybe don't read it. So anyway, I can't think of anything redeeming about this book. I haven't rated it yet. I haven't put it through my system to give it a rating yet. I'll do that later. I will update you on the rating when I next update you. I'll tell you what I gave it. The next thing on my list is The Great Hunt. So this is a book. I don't remember who it's by, but it's one you've probably seen before. I think it's a fantasy romance. I'm not entirely sure what I'm getting myself into with this one, but uh, I think it's a YA fantasy romance. It's probably going to also be less, not very good, but you know, better. This video is a mistake. I just want to tack on a very, very quick little note to say I rated it and I gave it a 1.25 stars. 
Um, the only thing I really kind of gave it a little bit of credit for was the setting because he is very good at describing nature and there were some really pretty descriptions of nature and the like choice to set it in a town outside of like the wilderness was a good choice for what he was trying to do. That's all I kind of gave him credit for. Then I read some five-star reviews and that was a mistake because they're all like, his characters are so great, I love them. And I'm like, where? Anyway, so the next book I'm reading is The Great Hunt by Wendy Higgins. This is the cover of it, which I'm sure you maybe have seen some more somewhere. Um, you can see that well. Anyway, girl wandering through the woods. Uh, it's part of a duology. So maybe I'll like it, I'll read the second one. Also, it's a fantasy romance, so we'll see. Um, let me see, da, 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 da. what's it about? All right, this is about, there's some sort of creature terrorizing this kingdom and the king offers his daughter's hand to the man that can slay this beast. Uh, and she's like, I'm not really into it. One of the guys that shows up is like all broody and quiet and stuff. And she's like, mm, maybe him though. Um, yeah, so we shall see. It says it's a inspired by the grim fairy tale, The Singing Bone. So maybe I'll read that first. Maybe I'll read it second. It's really outside of the scope of this challenge, isn't it? I will make a decision on that as we go. Maybe I'll read it tonight. No, I should do some. You know what? I'll make that decision on my own and let you know. I just finished The Great Hunt by Wendy Higgins. I swear I meant to update you somewhere in the middle and I don't think I ever ended up doing that. Oh well. Um. So to start with the rating, I gave it 3.25 stars. Uh, I feel like this one was it's a fantasy romance, which is not a genre I really read. Kind of want to give it a shot. Um, and I feel like maybe this is normal for this genre, so maybe I just am not familiar with it, but it felt like it wasn't really, didn't really find a balance, right? Like there were times where I was like, with, waiting for that romantic moment and it focused on the fantasy stuff like the world building and there were those moments where i was like really getting into the fantasy and then it switched to the romance subplot and that's what i it felt like two subplots and no main plot like there's this stuff going on with like the oppression of the lash i don't know how well i explained what this book is about but it's um i read the thing intro the the the, the, the description on um story graph but like basically there's this i want to talk about the world a little more just because it didn't really explain the world in this world there's people that are lashed and they use the magic they're magic users and in the recent past some guy went like crazy like two generations three generations ago and one of the magic users went crazy and tried to take over and now the magic users the lashed are super oppressed and it's kind of relevant because the kind one of the plots in this story is about this lashed woman and i won't say too much more there i don't know how much more to say about any of what i have to say because it seems like a lot of spoilers anyway there's like this fantasy plot which is about like the oppression of the lashed and the mystery of what this beast is and where it came from and what its purpose is and the hunt for the beast and then on the other side, you had the romance, which was about like, uh, you know, the romance. There were actually like three of them, but neither one really felt like a full plot. And I kind of felt disappointed with both of them. Um, on the plus side, this did not go in any of the directions I was expecting. So first off, I just kind of automatically assumed we were gonna get some sort of either werewolf-esque thing or Beauty and the Beast type thing. Uh, and we didn't. Where I just kind of assumed the like main, the edgy, mysterious bad boy was gonna end up being the beast. So, you know, that's good. And it also, I read the fairy tale. And so the fairy tale, to give you the very, very short version, I would read it to you, but I closed the tab. Uh, 
The fairy tale is there's a wild boar that's causing havoc in the kingdom. So the king offers the hand of his daughter to the man that can slay this wild boar. And two brothers go to hunt it. And the older is me, angry and rude and just in it for the glory. And the younger one is sweet and kind and caring. Um, and he's doing it because it's the right thing to do or whatever. And when they get into the woods, the younger brother comes across like a mysterious man or something who is, he helps. And that man gives him like a spear to slay the hog with. And he goes and he slays the hog because this is the only spear that can pierce its hide or something. Uh, on his way back, his brother is like carousing in a tavern and partying and ignoring his duties. And his brother sees that the younger one has this corpse and it's like, come party with us and they get kind of wasted and on their way back the older brother kills the younger brother but hides his body blames it on the boar everybody assumes the boar just killed him and then he marries the princess and years later they discover it so i was expecting some more of that brother plot and that really didn't come in so that was you know good so i was surprised on the plot at least um I was into the romances, I just kind of wanted them more. I especially, I especially liked because it didn't try to portray it as love. Like it was very clear these people were lusting for each other, even though this is definitely YA, like it doesn't cross those lines. Um, but it was very clear that they were like, it was that, it wasn't love. So I really liked that. I don't know. 3.25, it's middle of the road, nothing super crazy, impressive, but nothing I hate. And it did intrigue me enough that I do want to read the second book, so, which is like The Hunt Returns or something, I don't know. But <laughs> I'm delaying a little because the Dragon Reborn. All right, here was my plan. When I picked out the books, I like Googled, I searched on Storygraph the titles and I picked books that had similar titles. And there's one called The Dragon Reborn by Kathleen H. Nelson, which is a fantasy. The cover is, here, come here. This cover is wild. Um, so that was my original plan. The problem being, the problem being, I'll put you back in a second. Uh, I can't get it, it's not on Libby. It's not on Storygraph as far as I can see. Or not story graph, sorry, it's not on script as far as I can see. What is on script, however, is Dragon Reborn by Eva Lang Lies. So uh, let me show you the cover of that one. Yeah, I don't know about that one. In any case, that's the one I can get. That's the one I'm going to be reading, for better or for worse, which is fine because the, and I'll have this in my intro, one of the things that kind of inspired me to do this was a, a tweet that I saw, and I will show you that in my intro, so you'll have seen it by now. Anyway, so let's read uh, what this is about. but from my understanding romance series don't tend to actually be series <sighs> let me just real quick let me just um so this is the plot of this is some lady dragons man dragon gets kidnapped and she's gonna go get him back anyway so i guess i'm gonna start that i don't know if this will be a pg video after this all right i am 38 yeah. percent of the way through the dragon reborn dragon reborn it sucks all right it sucks um the protagonist of this well there's i guess two the two love interests um is just so obnoxious i hate everything about her voice and it's like she's the kind of character if she was a little more maybe self-aware she'd be really interesting uh, but right now she sucks. Like, there's this, like, scene where, like, 
she's captured by somebody and she's playing it off like smug and things and from the outside perspective like watching it when we get the other character's perspective it's kind of cool she's like oh you know you're being such a bad host right now and things like that um and stuff like well uh i think i'm bored with you now could you just leave and uh don't try to talk to me because i'm gonna ignore you like it's the kind of thing that like uh if she was doing it intentionally as like a way to mess with them it'd be kind of a really cool trait but she's not like when we're in her perspective she like legitimately believes this stuff so it's not and it's if you watch critical role which i love jester lavore is a great character to watch i would not want to be in jester lavore's head and i'm in jester lavore's head except if she wasn't naive and innocent so somehow it's even worse um so yeah i'm hating it but i'm gonna truck through it here's my plan it's friday afternoon I'm done with work for the day i have no real obligations for the rest of the day other than making dinner i'm gonna try to finish it if i finish it today i'm going to tack on a fourth book for this and do the shadow rising too if i can find a book for that if i don't finish it today about a 50 50 chance i just dnf it anyway that's where we're at. I um, just finished the uh, Dragon Reborn. And I wasn't going to update you. I mean, well, okay, I finished this last night and it's the next morning and I'm like reading it. I'm going to return the book and stuff. But anyway, I wasn't going to update you because I have some work first class to do. Uh, this is the next book. It's Demon Walking. I will not be reading it. But I just also wanted to show you some of the other series that this woman has written. Uh, I think these are all shifter books. We got, you know, great books like Outfoxed by Love. Not too bad. Caribou's Gift. Um, on this side, these ones might be uh, Florida themed, if I had to guess. And then these ones look more um, African inspired. Is that it? Oh, I think we're at the end. Well... I just need to share those with you. I will talk with y'all about the actual feelings of the book and wrap up this after I get some work done for class because uh, I got a lot to do this weekend. I am a little bit distracted, and by distracted I mean I wrote an essay and a half and then went grocery shopping. But it's a good thing because I have this Avril Lavigne CD that I listen to in the car. Don't judge me. It's a whole thing. And the song on it perfectly encapsulates the main character of this book and also like their love story if you really really want to get a deep intimate understanding of the main character from this book listen to rock and roll by avril lavigne and then like watch a porn or something because that really that's this character um what i'm saying is the characters in this book were really shallow um i just to sum it up, my story graph review of this started with something along the lines of if you were reading this first smut, there's too much plot, and if you were reading it for the plot, the plot isn't good. Uh, there were a couple little things to give it a little bit of credit. I mean, it definitely didn't feel lost, even though I was jumping in the middle of the series because it made a really good job of recapping the series, although I imagine if I was actually reading this sequentially, that would have been really, really annoying because it was a little overly recappy at the beginning. Um, all the, like, action fighting-wise was very abrupt and sudden, and, uh, it just wasn't good. I gave it 1.25 stars, and I feel like I was being a little bit generous there. Yeah, maybe I'll go back and change that to only one star. Also, there was really weird anti-intersex stuff that was just totally unnecessary, and great, we're back to calling people hermaphrodites. So anyway, long story short, uh, not a good book. I decided I'm not gonna do Shadow Rising right now because, so when I looked up on the story, there are many, 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 many books called Shadow Rising. Problem is none of them are ones I actually have access to. So I looked both at like what I have on Libby and I looked at Scribd and there wasn't anything called like Shadow Rising or even something close to it. like the rising shadow or anything like that the closest there was was a book i can't remember the name of it 
but it's the sequel to a book that I am interested in reading and I'd really rather not read the sequel before I read the book I actually want to read. So that'll be in a different video if you guys are interested. So let me know below. Are you interested? Would you like me to do something like this? Keep going through the series? Uh, if so, leave some suggestions for books. Include the author so I can find it more easily down below that you think I should read that have the same title or very similar titles to Wheel of Time books. Also, a possibility if you'd be interested, I could do cover copies or whatever, similar covers, but that one feels a little bit harder, so I'm only going to do that if you guys leave me, some, leave me some good suggestions down below. Like, if you're like, the cover of X book looks exactly like Y Wheel of Time book, I might be interested in doing that. So, let me know below if this is something you want to see me do a little bit more of, and uh, yeah. Alright, bye.